We have all had it happen at some point. A revenant missile hits you in the face and you lose a huge amount of health, but the next hit barely leaves a mark. What about zombie men being unable to hit you no matter how hard they try, but the next day they turn into elite snipers? This of course is all handled by Doom's pseudo-random number generator, or better known as RNG. How does it work? Which game elements are affected by RNG? What would happen if Doom had no RNG at all? This, of course, will all be addressed in this video. The way RNG works in Doom is quite simple. In the code there's a table with 256 random values and an index number points to one of these values. When the level starts this index will be set to 0, the first entry of the table. Each time a weapon, monster or anything requires a random value, the value where the index is pointing at will be returned. The index will move to the next value in the table when done. Once the index reaches 255, it will wrap around to zero. Doom doesn't use a random seat upon starting the game. The game will always use the same RNG values if the player's timing is consistent. Take a look at this example. I'm going to load up Doom 2's map 1. I'm not going to move, I will fire the gun once and that's it. Keep note of how the zombie men approach me and how much damage I take when getting shot. Let's do it again. And one more time. As you've noticed, the outcome was the same each time. This is why playing back demos works with this RNG method, since the only thing that matters is the player input and when RNG functions get called. One more thing I'd like to point out that there's actually two indices used for RNG. One is used for global things that affect all players in network games, so stuff like weapon damage, monster AI, etc. This is to prevent network games from desyncing. Let's call this one P-random. The second index is only used for specific players' perspective, so stuff like the screen melt and sound pitches. This one we will call M-random. For the majority of the video I'll be talking specifically about P-random. At the end, I'll show off what is affected by M-random. So let's see how monsters make use of P-random. When a new level starts, each monster's idle animation gets a random offset. This is why groups of monsters aren't synchronized when idling. Newly spawned monsters also get a random player number assigned that they last saw. Not sure what that's about, but hey, it's an RNG call. When a monster discovers a player, it will play an alert sound. Most monsters use a single sound, but there's a special case for zombies and imps. Zombies will randomly use one of their three alert sounds, and imps will use one of two. Monsters that are walking around will randomly play a surge sound. Each game tick there's a 1.18% chance of playing a surge sound. There's 35 game ticks in a second, so let's roughly say there's a 40% chance they will make a sound for every second. When a monster is chasing a target, it will randomly choose a direction in an attempt to find a path to the enemy. When a monster attempts to walk and is blocked by a wall, it will set a random amount of tries before changing direction. When a monster's target is in sight, it will call RNG each tick and compare the RNG value with the distance between itself and the target. The closer the target, the bigger the chance it will perform a missile attack. Monsters that lack a ranged attack, like pinkies, won't call this RNG function. When the player is using partial invisibility, the monster's sprite angle will receive a random offset when attacking. Additionally, another offset is randomly calculated to determine the projectile offset. This means the monster's sprite angle won't always correspond with the projectile direction. There's a special condition when you damage monsters you may have noticed yourself. If you kill an enemy by dealing less than 40 damage and the monster is located higher than you, there's a 50% chance the monster will fall forwards. Damaging monsters also cause RNG to see if they must play their pain animation. Each monster has its own unique pain chance programmed in, with the Lost Saw having the highest and Archfall the lowest. Monsters damaged by crushes will call RNG up to 4 times to calculate the blood splatter's thrust and direction. When a monster dies it will play a death sound. Just like alert sounds, most monsters only have one. 
Once again, the zombies and imps get special treatment by both having two death sounds that will play randomly. Another RNG call will be made during a monster's death animation to play the first frame slightly faster. You can see this when you kill a big group of zombie men. Some will play the next death animation frame earlier than others. Even when dead, monsters will still call RNG. Of course, only if you play on Nightmare difficulty or with respawning monsters enabled. RNG will determine when it's time to respawn. So that's how the monster's behavior is affected by RNG. Let's see how they fare in combat. All zombies call RNG twice to determine their gunshot offset and a third call for damage. Each gunshot or pellet will deal 3 to 15 damage. Shotgunners shoot 3 pellets at once, so this RNG routine is called 3 times. Chain gunners will also call RNG a fourth time during their refire check. This refire checks if the target is out of sight or dead. If true, the chain gunner must stop shooting. However, this refire has a very low chance of ignoring that out of sight or dead check, so chain gunners won't always stop shooting the moment you are hiding or dead. The spider demon uses the same attack as the shotgunner and the same refire check as the chain gunner, but with a much lower chance of refiring. The Nazi also shares the same attack as the chain gunner, but slower. Let's talk about the imp's projectiles. There's something interesting about projectiles in general. Each projectile in the game uses the same RNG algorithm for damage. First a number between 1 and 8 is generated, and then multiplied by the projectile's base damage. So the imp fireball's base damage is set to 3, then multiplied by a random number between 1 and 8, setting the fireball damage between 3 and 24. Coincidentally, the same as its melee damage. Since many monsters share the same build of the imp, I'll quickly go through each monster's damages. Fun fact, the Revenant's missiles aren't truly affected by RNG. There's no coin toss involved whether its missiles should be homing or not. It all depends on which game tick it attacks. If the game tick is odd, it will be an unguided missile. If even, it will be guided. There's one more monster left to discuss and that's the Icon of Sin. The spawn cube it spits out will spawn a random demon. Here's a list of the demons that will spawn and their spawning probability. The Icon of Sin's explosions upon death is an RNG fest which affects the explosion's 3D position, upward speed and animation length variation. Up next, how is general combat affected by RNG? Blood that appears after shooting an enemy will call RNG three times, twice to set the random height and position and once to advance the first frame slightly faster so there's variation in frames when you shoot with a super shotgun for instance. The same occurs to bullet puffs. The fist calls RNG 3 times to set the damage and player angle. Damage will be between 2 and 20, with Berserk this value is multiplied by 10. The chainsaw is exactly the same, but it just attacks faster. And of course, the Berserk multiplier is not applicable here. The pistol, shotgun and chain gun all use the same algorithm. Damage is randomly set between 5 and 15, and the spread is also randomized. There's a tiny exception for pistols and chain guns, where the first shot is always 100% accurate. The super shotgun is quite a big boy. For each pellet it will call RNG 5 times. There's 20 pellets in each shot, resulting in a whopping 100 RNG calls each time you pull the trigger. Two RNG calls are made for the horizontal spread, another two for vertical spread, and the fifth one for the damage, which is between 5 and 15. Just like the Cyberdemon, the player's rockets deal between 20 and 160 damage, excluding splash damage. The rocket explosion animation's first frame has a tiny random offset to add variation to the animation length. This actually applies to every projectile impact in the game. The plasma rifle calls RNG for every tick it is firing. Each game tick, there's a 50% chance the rifle will play its other firing frame. The plasma rifle's base damage is 5, and since it also uses the general missile RNG algorithm, 
This value will be multiplied by a value between 1 and 8, setting the plasma ball damage to between 5 and 40. Shot projectiles that animate will have a tiny random offset at their first frame to create variation in animation lengths. The BFG's base damage is 100, resulting in projectile damage between 100 and 800. Upon projectile impact, the player will emit 40 invisible BFG tracers that each deal random damage. Each tracer will deal between 49 and 87 damage. In theory, the maximum damage dealt by the BFG is 4280 damage. But due to the way the order of the random values in the RNG table are placed, this damage is impossible to reach. With good RNG, the maximum damage is around 2200 damage, with the average being around 1800. So that's all combat related stuff. Let's see how the environment uses RNG. A bit of an obscure feature, but the radiation suit doesn't always protect you. For every second you walk on high damaging floors, there's a 2.3% chance the acid or lava penetrates through your suit and damages you normally. Upon map load, all sectors that have strobing or flickering lights receive a random offset so they all flash at different intervals. Flickering lights will set a random light value every 4 ticks. Flashing lights toggles its light for a random amount of time. There's an elevator type that oscillates up and down with a random waiting time each time a limit is reached. When respawning during a deathmatch game, RNG will be called to select a random deathmatch spawn. So that's everything affected by P-random. There's a few M-random calls, so let's check those out. The famous melting screen uses many RNG calls to set the melting vertical rows of pixels offsets. The status bar face calls RNG each tick to determine its sprite. The buildings found in Doom 1's intermission screen all start with a random animation offset. Also at the intermission screen, there's an animation flag programmed in to animate buildings in a random order, but this type of animation ended up unused. Sounds also make use of mRandom. It is used to add variation in sound pitches. The chainsaw is programmed to have less pitch shifting than anything else in the game. And the sound for picking up items or power-ups is programmed to have no pitch shifting at all. And now for the last RNG call, exiting the game. In Vanilla Doom, when you exit the game, a random sound from a list of sounds will play- no. What? It's not random at all. It's not random? Look at the code, you nerd. Oh. Uh, yep, it isn't. The sound is actually based on which game tick you exit. The more you know. Now that we've discussed everything that makes use of RNG in Doom, let's try something fun. Since the table of random values is baked into the binary, or executable in this case since I'm using Windows, you can actually edit it to tweak the RNG. All you have to do is open a hex editor, go to address 0014C2E0, and replace the next 256 bytes with any value you want. By doing this you can essentially eliminate randomness altogether if the table consists of only one value. Let's do some experiments. What if we set every value to zero? Well, the first thing you will notice is that the screen melt has no random offsets anymore, so the entire screen slides down vertically. Monsters will play the surge sound constantly, and will only attack when you get close. They will also only do minimal damage, and so does your pistol. The plasma rifle doesn't animate anymore. Your super shotgun turns into a freaking sniper rifle, and the icon of sin will only spawn imps. Now let's change the values to, um, let's try A1. Let's see what the icon of sin does now. Oh god. Oh no. This is what real hell must look like. Let's quickly kill the final boss. Hmm. The death explosions aren't very satisfying anymore. So yeah, there's a lot of experimenting you can do with the RNG table. Too much to show in this video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learn a new thing or two in an entertaining way. I truly appreciate all the support I've been getting lately. You guys are amazing. I will see you next time.